Hi everyone, this is Tommy Givens here, professor of your course of NT500 New Testament Introduction. I want to spend a few minutes in this video introducing the course to you, uh, giving you a broad sense of what its goals are, a little bit of what some of the assignments will be about, what their purpose is, so that you have a feel for what the course is about as a whole. Of course, I hope you'll take time to read the syllabus carefully and to raise any questions that you have about that uh, with me. You could probably use um, the forum there that is for announcements or general questions at the top of Moodle. But first of all, I should say that one course in 10, 11 weeks to introduce the whole New Testament is daunting. It is a lot. And I imagine that it will be difficult to avoid uh, at least some sense of being in a whirlwind. I'm going to do my best to uh, be selective about what we try to cover so that we do justice to what we cover and don't rush past a bunch of things. This class is not a survey where we just look at everything from 30,000 feet. Instead, it's an introduction uh, to the New Testament. And that means that it is going to be focused on reading, interpreting the New Testament carefully. Uh, that means we're probably not going to be able to uh, look at every book in the New Testament. Instead, I have selected books that I want us to consider as samples. They're samples especially of the genre of the New Testament, so narratives, epistles, and then the apocalypse at the end. And then I've tried to choose narratives and letters that I think uh, highlight some of the uh, crucial themes that an introduction to the New Testament should acquaint you with. We are going to try to avoid the temptation that we all have to live with, which is we read the New Testament primarily with a view to sort of uh, proving our pet peeves um, or uh, interpreting it according to already conceived talking points that we have. Instead, we want to try to slow down enough so that the words of the New Testament can disturb us, can actually unsettle, perhaps, some of what we've brought to the class, not with the goal of leaving you with a bunch of uh, shattered fragments on the floor, but uh, hopefully with a view to deepening uh, your understanding of the Christian faith, not least by challenging uh, what some of the basic language of the Christian faith means. Uh, you're going to see me already trying to do that in the presentation for week one about the hope of Messiah and the one who prepares the way. We're going to look at terms like the forgiveness of sins that is basic really to our living the Christian faith and yet perhaps is not nourished adequately by close biblical study. So uh, we're going to be trying to read carefully. That means a couple of things. First, it means that we have to acknowledge that when we read the New Testament, we're reading books. There are 27 books in the New Testament, and each one of these books is a kind of whole, so that the meaning of its parts depends to a large extent on the whole that it is a part of. You could think of it somewhat like a, a movie where if you sort of parachuted into a scene at minute 42 in a movie and didn't take into account where that scene sits in the 90 minute or two hour movie, you're not going to be able to interpret that scene very well. And similarly, we've got to work uh, in our study of the New Testament to place the passages that we're going to study closely within the larger arguments of the books that they are a part of. So we've got to kind of be looking at the big picture of each book as we're 
studying particular passages. Uh, but then, of course, at the same time, we've got to read slowly enough so that we don't gloss over details in those passages. Uh, we've got to see things that don't quite fit or that are ambiguous or we're not quite sure what to do with and uh, allow those uh, kind of puzzles to uh, give us pause and to try to see how those details fit in the flow of the, of the book at that point. So we're going to be doing that on the uh, sort of uh, other poll. We've got the large book of each uh, passage, and then we got the details of each passage as we're going to be studying them. And uh, one of the key factors, I think, to good interpretation of the New Testament, according to both of these polls, is something that is going to sort of permeate this course and it is that the New Testament is deeply rooted in the soil of the Old Testament. So time and again, I'm going to be trying to uh, show how what the words mean in the New Testament depends on where they come from in the Old Testament, how they're related to the hopes and promises and difficulties and drama of Israel's past without uh, that sense of the larger story and sort of scriptural language that the New Testament is rooted in, I think we tend to interpret the New Testament quite poorly. Uh, one of the uh, features of taking the Old Testament more seriously as the soil out of which the New Testament grows is that it brings, I think, a uh, quite a bit more body, you might say, to what the New Testament is about. Without the Old Testament, we sometimes don't perceive what's at stake in the New Testament, like what justification by faith uh, might, why that might be so important in the teaching of Paul, what circumcision is about, um, what's all of this stuff about the temple. Without a sense of uh, what these institutions and words have meant in Israel's memory and dramatic past, we won't interpret uh, what they are in relation to Jesus, in relation to apostolic teaching in the New Testament. And frankly, we'll end up sometimes with um, a very kind of ethereal sense of what the Christian life is about. It becomes easy to privatize it, to make it something that's primarily about the inside of each person, the heart condition of someone or something like that. Uh, we might think about its uh, consummation as primarily something that happens after death in heaven. Those kinds of ways of reading New Testament language are totally alien to the Old Testament, which always treats people as parts of social wholes. Uh, they have their individuality, but that individuality is constituted by how they're related to other human beings as well as to God. And uh, then the future that people are hoping for is not to escape the earth, uh, to get to a different place called heaven. They're uh, waiting for uh, the promises made to their ancestors about the coming of God's blessings, of God's peace uh, to the earth. And so if we take these kinds of terms of the Old Testament seriously as uh, providing at least some constraint on what we're doing with the New Testament, uh, with who Jesus is, with what the Christian life is about, I think you'll find that it gives a kind of thickness to the language. It begins to press upon us, I think, ethically, calling to us to live in certain ways, to cultivate certain concerns about our neighbors, especially our most vulnerable neighbors, and even to begin to discern how our enemies are uh, loved by this God and a part of a future that God is committed to. So uh, the Old Testament context is crucial for, for, crucial for all kinds of reasons. Here I just want to highlight that it's in, crucial for interpreting New Testament language uh, so that New Testament language has the, the kind of theological, ethical thickness that it needs to have uh, so that it communicates uh, well God's word uh, to us. Of course everybody comes to this class and 
expects me, as they should, to be dealing quite a bit with historical context. Historical context is important, and we will be uh, looking at it quite a bit in this class. You'll see in the first presentation of week one, we're going to look at some texts from Josephus, for example, from the first century, a first century Jewish writer. But I want to warn you a little bit because I am not too friendly to the idea that in order to interpret the New Testament, we have to uh, sort of disembody ourselves uh, from where we are and pretend to inhabit like the first century and pretend that the New Testament is sort of locked in that past uh, and uh, we have to sort of unearth it, dig it up there to figure out what it means. Uh, I don't think that's a very uh, sound way of thinking about historical context, partly because we're not capable of disembodying ourselves. The way that we imagine the past will always be, at least in part, a function of our formation in the present. So what we want to do is to study the past, not to sort of relocate the New Testament there or ourselves there, but uh, to allow the way we have come to hear the New Testament today to be questioned, uh, enriched perhaps, uh, by the sorts of contexts in which the New Testament lived uh, in the past. But at the end of the day, the New Testament has lived from the time that it was composed all the way down to the present so that it has already shaped us in countless ways, and we're going to be interpreting it as a living word. And our concern with a historical context is primarily about questioning and enriching our understanding of our present in light of what we can learn about the historical context of the New Testament. It's not about uh, pretending that we can relocate ourselves uh, into the past. So if you want to ask more about that um, in the forums in week one, I certainly welcome that. Just uh, now to think about some of the logistics of the class, obviously you've got a uh, the syllabus that lays out the books uh, for you. Uh, you are going to be doing two book reviews. Um, one of the book by Gerd uh, Tyson, In the Shadow of the Galilean. Um, that's especially concerned uh, with this question of historical context, but I think you'll also see that it is going to hopefully uh, enliven perhaps your sense of the presence of Christ among us today and what the calling of Christ means uh, in our life today. But the purpose of that assignment, the review, is especially for you to um, not just get a sense of what that book is about, but also to uh, critically engage what the study of historical context contributes to our interpretation of the Gospels in particular. The second book um, that you'll be looking at is a book by uh, my colleague here, Joel Green. Um, and uh, this book uh, is concerned especially with the, the methods, the imagination uh, with which we interpret the Bible, uh, all of the kind of contextual questions that arise here, the fact that we all interpret the Bible from a particular place under certain influences, etc. That's going to come a little bit later in the class. Uh, broadly, we might think about that as a book about hermeneutics. Um, but I think it's something that an introduction to the New Testament um, should uh, acquaint you with, uh, at least in an introductory way. You'll be working more with that in a class that um, is required at Fuller as well called uh, Interpretive Practices, BI 500. Uh, as far as assignments, um, besides the two book reviews, uh, you'll also be doing two interpretive working papers. And those two assignments are designed to uh, develop some beginning skill uh, for you in the interpretation of particular passages in light of those two poles that I mentioned earlier. Uh, seeing the passage as part of the whole of the book, maybe also a part of a section within the book so that you interpret it according to the flow of the book at that point, but also a study of the passage in uh, all of its detail trying to take its details seriously. Um, it's a working paper in each case because it's not designed to um, generate a final argument about what the passage is saying. Instead, it's more of uh, an investigative kind of exercise 
Uh, we'll talk more about it as we get to the first one, but there's going to be two of those papers. One is going to be on a narrative. You get to choose from five passages that I've given you as options in the syllabus. The second one will be on an epistle, and there are options for you to choose from uh, for the passage that you'll study for that second paper as well. So that's a broad overview of the course. I'm excited about it. I hope that you are ready to uh, dive in deep. Our weekly forum discussions are obviously a crucial part of the class, and you'll see in the syllabus that I've tried to make the way that those are done and the grading of them such that you feel free to participate and be transparent and to contribute thoughts that are not entirely finished. Um, you don't always have to be sure about everything you're saying. It's okay to try things out. We need a kind of experimental space, I think, in those forums. So I'm looking forward to that kind of discussion with you. And uh, there are other details in the syllabus. And I look forward to getting to know each of you a little bit with your introduction videos um, that should be coming up in the first week. And uh, also just with our interaction over the rest of the course. So I look forward to... Uh, Speaking with you in the forums in week one, welcome to NT500 New Testament Introduction.